Former President Olusegu Obasanjo has congratulated Joe Biden on his projected victory in the United States presidential election. He commended the former U.S. Vice President in an open letter addressed to the Democratic candidate. Biden with Kamala Harris as his running mate will be the 46th President of America when sworn into office on January 20, 2020. In his congratulating message, Obasanjo taxed the newly elected president to restore confidence in the role of America as the largest economy in the world, which has very significant responsibility for the peace, security, stability and progress of the world. Joining us live to discuss this is uh, Professor Bola Akinterewa, former DG, Nigerian Institute of International Affairs. Thank you very much for joining us, Professor. Thank you for having me. From the tone of congratulatory messages from world leaders, including President Muhammad Buhari of Nigeria and even former President Olusegun Obasanjo, what should Nigeria and Africa at large expect? We should begin to expect uh, better days to come in the relationship. Bearing in mind the fact that uh, under Donald Trump, Africa does not have any um, strategic position. There wasn't any special attention, any importance attached to Africa. But we now have um, a Joe Biden, whose uh, attitudinal disposition uh, is more favorable to the making of a better relationship between the United States and um, the African continent in general, and between the United States and Nigeria in particular. So in this case, um, I will expect that um, the disposition of the United States will be better. It will be friendly on many grounds. First of all, you know quite well that uh, Africa has been tilting towards um, the Chinese. The Americans are much concerned with this type of relationship in the belief that, look, Chinese using soft power approach is um, concretizing its um, influence in Africa to the detriment of the Americans. And they don't want this. So there is the need for the new American in the making uh, to ensure that better ties are, you know, sustained with Africa. Donald Trump talks about making America great again, talking about uh, America first. Under Joe Biden, it's no longer going to be making America great again, but making America respected again. This is where the issue is. And uh, Africa is the first, um, you know, um, continent of concern in this new, um, this new um, policy dispensation in the making. More importantly, in uh, restoring respect for the Americans, I think the strategy of Joe Biden now is the four Bs. Four Bs, that is Biden's build back better. They talk about building back better. That's, that's the new philosophy. And in this case, Africa is certainly going to be the beneficiary uh, of this, particularly at the level of Nigeria. You know, the United States seriously needs a very why to be able to contain the spread of um, terrorism, particularly in, um, in the Gulf region. So in this case, Nigeria is the most appropriate, the most reliable country they can count upon. Let me remind you that uh, the Africa Command of um, the United States, which is currently um, headquartered in Stuttgart, in Germany. They wanted to relocate the headquarters to Africa. And uh, when they had in mind Nigeria, they consulted with Nigeria. But um, the um, elite opinion, expert opinion, military strategists thought that, look, there shouldn't be any basis 
to have it a headquarters in Nigeria. Small countries like um, um, the Gambia, Benin Republic, all these countries, they, they want the headquarters. But uh, the United States didn't want that. They want Nigeria. That's to let you know the importance attached to Nigeria as a strategic location. They want strategic partnership, which has not always been translated into meaningful construction. Ambassador Jokeshi once uh, um, want said that, look, yes, we have this strategic partnership on paper, but it has never been translated into action. I think under Joe Biden, constructive meaning can be given to this. That right, uh, look, Professor. this time, Africa command can be an issue. So, Professor, how about the world, especially the conversation around world climate change, the WHO and the U.S. allies? What should we, the expectation be, you know, you know towards uh, Biden's uh, presidency? I can assure you that um, we are now going to witness um, the beginning of a new world order in the mania of the United States. First of all, the beginning of joy, of happiness, does not necessarily mean, does not necessarily translate into uh, end of bitterness, end of um, unhappiness, in the sense that we have, for instance, uh, Joe Biden. It is joy for Joe Biden, but it is bitterness for Donald Trump. Donald Trump did not give any meaning to climate change. But um, Joe Biden is interested in it. That is the passion. We should expect that one. The Iranian nuclear deal, for instance, Donald Trump withdrew from it, bastardized it, gave it a nonsensical meaning. But uh, Joe Biden is against that. He believes in um, um, nuclear stability. Now, there is this uh, climate change that we have um, just raised. Joe Biden will return to it, to the Paris um, Agreement. So when you take all this into consideration, relationship with um, China, for instance, Joe Biden has a soft, a different approach to it. He doesn't want to fight China, but he wants to do precisely what the Chinese are doing in Africa but in a more competitive, you know, substantial manner. In other words, Africa now is now going to have many suitors competing to woo her as a, as a new wife. So in this case, the expectations are that under Joe Biden, relationship with the traditional partners of um, the United States will be revisited and things will go normal and we can then expect that under normal circumstances, and particularly with uh, Joe Biden looking at the possibility of healing, he doesn't believe that um, you make America great by dividing. No, he wants to make America great this time by unifying, by uniting, by encouraging fairness and justice in the system. And I think that this is what the whole world will be expecting. I'm mm. not surprised that uh, the Australian leader the British Prime Minister, all of them are talking in terms of shared value, um, shared outlook. And in this case, the, while thanking uh, Donald Trump for his atrocities, they still, expected, um, they, they still expect that there will be better understanding between Joe Biden in, his, in a manner that we project, you know, um, the possibility of maintaining international peace and security worldwide. Professor, let's look at two critical topical issues which some believe affected Trump's loss. I'm talking about Black Lives Matter protests and the COVID-19 pandemic. What's Biden likely to do differently? In this case, uh, the mere fact that Joe Biden uh, is fighting against... Um, you know, systemic racism. What we will expect from him is to ensure that they put a final stop or at least to mitigate this institutional um, injustice. 
um, blacks in general uh, decided to vote for him massively. I think um, one should expect that uh, to whom much is given, uh, much should be expected. Donald, uh, Donald Trump lost simply because of his don't care attitude. He lost because of uh, his uh, arrogance, because of his uh, holier than thou, because he thinks that uh, he has monopoly of knowledge, or that he's the only one having the Solomonic, uh, uh, having a sagacious mind more than all others. But uh, um, Joe Biden, with um, more than four decades of um, experience as an establishment uh, man, very gentlemanly, and at the end of the day, more soft-spoken, I think he will carry this character of his to the, to the black world, to the African-American world, to the world of um, the people that have been um, um, given um, you know, a world of injustice. And in this case, he will address that. The mere fact that uh, he's talking as a Democrat, you know, Democratic Party in the United States has generally been more sympathetic to African um, concerns, to black concerns generally. They've been talking more about fairness in the society. So I wouldn't expect anything less um, in, in, in reaching out to all of them. And lastly, Professor, before the swearing in on January 20th, 2020, how strategic can Biden engage Trump's policies? Sorry, what happened was that uh, there was a power outage. Yes, I'm connected with you now. All right. So do we have you back on air yes, now? Uh, yes, I can hear you very well now. Okay. So we're trying to find out, you know, what you think and how you think uh, the president-elect can strategically, you know, address and engage with the policies of Donald Trump before he's sworn in next year. Okay. In this case, I think we should be talking about uh, uh, case by case. When you take a particular policy, then you can address it constructively. One, on uh, climate change, he needs to quickly sign an executive order replacing uh, the old order. So how to go about it will first of all include this signing of executive order. He doesn't need to go through um, congressional uh, processes, which can delay. So that's the first one. The second uh, approach can be for him to send the diplomatic notes, all right? Um, let me say, officiously, in advance, pending uh, January 20, to the traditional uh, allies of the United States, telling them what he intends to do to prepare to build trust, confidence, well in advance. So if, for instance, a foundation for trust building is laid, there is no way he wouldn't begin to tread uh, softly. Thirdly, in this case, there are some um, policies Trump talked about that were good, that are good, but he was only going about the execution in, um, you know, in an uh, on diplomatic uh, fashion. For instance, Donald Trump is talking about um, national security. There's no way Joe Biden will not ensure that um, there is national security. He's talking about carrying the war to the doorsteps of uh, international terrorists. Joe Biden cannot undo that. So what will happen in um, strategically dealing with some of these policies will be to reaffirm as well to say, look, there will never be any compromise with um, terrorists. So in this case, that reaffirmation will be 
a good strategy. All right, Professor. All, Unfortunately, about, we're, we're out of time right now. We really appreciate your thoughts and your time. Professor Bola Akinterwa, former DG of the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs. Thank you for having me. It's a player. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.